Hello, my name is Callum, also known as Wanderlutes, and welcome to this tutorial on how I automatically organize and index my Obsidian nodes. I like to think of this as building smart and automatic folders or inboxing and indexing in Obsidian. I don't know about you, but Obsidian can be kind of overwhelming. When you start to think about the organization and the plugins and all the different customizations that you can use, your personal knowledge management system starts to feel like a lot. My goal is to show you how I use four different plugins to simplify the organization and automate my inbox creation and my index creation so that I can focus more on the note taking and learning rather than organizing my notes and keeping my personal knowledge management system in check. To create smart and automatic inboxes and indexes in Obsidian, there are four plugins that I use. The Auto Note Mover plugin, the Data View plugin, the Templator plugin, and the book search plugin. Together, these simplify my organization process, automating it so that I can automatically put my notes into a folder and automatically keep track of the notes that I put in there with indexes. In this video, I'm gonna walk through four practical use cases on how I use Data View with these other plugins to automatically create these inboxes and indexes and just generally simplify my overall personal knowledge management system in Obsidian. I'll also show you at the end a free AI tool that I used to craft my data view queries, which has been a great help for me and really simplified my ability to create these indexes based on the inboxes. Also, I want to mention that all of these tutorials and all of the templates that I use throughout this tutorial can be found on my website in my digital garden at waterloots.xyz. There's a tutorial section and a template section so that if you found this interesting and you would like to implement these tools, this data view query into your own Obsidian Vault, then you can just copy and paste the code yourself and customize it as, as you need to. All right, let's get going. I can use the Auto Note Mover and the Data View plugin to create an index of my digital garden that shows the most recently edited files. This provides a great up-to-date log for visitors to my website so they can see what I've been working on. I can also use this plugin to create a table of all the notes that are related to a specific topic so that if I want to go see the notes that are related to a topic all in one location, I can go take a look at the topic page on my digital garden or in my vault, and I can see right away what are the most recent notes that I've added to that topic. I can also use the Auto Note Mover plugin with the data view to create a folder of the books that I've read and a table that shows a list of the books sorted by their genre, sorted by whether they are fiction or nonfiction, or any other form that you would like to organize it by. And Finally, I will also show you how I can use automatic links in the data view plugin to generate a table of the notes that have been created today and the notes that have been last touched today as part of my daily note. This is really helpful for organizing my thoughts and being able to return to the same headspace I had when I made the initial note because I can go and see the context of all of the other notes that I've also added on that day or updated on that day. And this one involves the templator plugin, so I'll get into that a little bit later. So all in all, there's going to be four different plugins that you need. The Auto Note Mover plugin, which allows you to automatically move the active note into its respective folder. The Data View plugin, which allows you to create an index, a table, or a list of notes that are in a specific folder and have particular characteristics like specific tags. The Book Search plugin, which allows you to create a note based on the title of a book that automatically populates the note with different metadata like the author, the number of pages, the genre, etc. And the Templator plugin, which allows for a lot more customization on data view tables because it, it can pull in specific note characteristics like today's date that allows you to keep track of the notes that were created on today. The Templator plugin has a ton of complexity, so we're just barely going to touch the surface of it. So in summary, we're going to use these four different plugins to create smart and automatic folders so that you can have automatic inboxing and indexing in your digital garden or in your vault. Now, everything I'm talking about here, I'm using with reference to my digital garden, which is my published wanderloots.xyz website. I'll show you how to set up the data view tables for your own notes, whether they're private or public, and then also show how you can modify the data view table to only show your public notes, which means that you can use them to publish onto your digital garden and keep track of the published notes versus your private notes. And this relates actually to the code method of taking notes that's often talked about in building a second brain. So I use Obsidian to keep track of all my notes that come to mind as I'm reading different books, as I'm coming up with different ideas. And I don't necessarily want to go through and organize them in any particular way because Obsidian enables me to have what's called an emergent organization system, 
I want to be able to just add topics or tags like I, you can see at the top here and have the notes go where they're supposed to go without me having to waste time with the organization. That way I can go back in later and distill the essence of my notes and then express them into my digital garden. Okay, now that you have an understanding on what we're going to be doing in this tutorial, I'm going to start with the auto note mover plugin. So you can go to your settings, community plugins, browse and search for auto note mover. And you can install the plugin here. I already have this one installed, so I'll show you how I have my options set up. This plugin has three main characteristics, it has a trigger, rules, and excluded folders. Now the trigger can happen automatically or manually. So what this means is if you include a tag like hashtag author or hashtag contains AI or hashtag book, hashtag source, whatever your tag system is, you can automatically trigger the note to move from its current folder into a folder that you've designated under the rules section using that tag. So for example, Every time I create a new source and I put hashtag source in the note, the note automatically moves to the sources folder. Similarly, if I use hashtag author, the note automatically moves to the author folder. To show you quickly how this works, I'm going to add the author to the book, How to Take Smart Notes as a new link. Click enter. So I've added Sonke Ahrens to the author property of How to Take Smart Notes. And now if I go to this note, you can see it's in the vault slash Sonke Ahrens. Now I want to use the auto note mover plugin to move this author to the author folder. So if I type in hashtag author, enter, you can see that the note was automatically moved to vault slash authors. That's great. This means anytime I want to use a tag to move a note into a specific folder, I can just quickly type in the tag and the note automatically moves to the folder. If I had an author template, I could apply the author template and that would also then trigger an automatic movement of this note into the author folder. So if I go to authors now and I scroll down, you can see Sonke is in the author folder. And this works for any type of tag that you've introduced in your system. So this first column here is a folder that you've established inside of your vault. And the second column here is the tag that triggers the movement of the note into the folder that you've selected. You can see here that I have quite a few automatic note movements. The way that it works is that it will check to see which is the first trigger to be activated. So for example, if a note has both the tag hashtag book and hashtag source, it will automatically move to the book folder, not the source folder, because the book is higher up on the hierarchy than the source folder is. But what happens if you add a new tag and the new tag ends up being higher up than the previous tag and you want the note to remain in its original folder? That's where the next part of the auto move plugin comes into play. So there's the option to add an excluded folder. So for example, I have a templates folder and once I've created a template, I don't want to have a note move out of the template folder because I use the template folder as part of the core plugin of templates, as you can see on the side here. So it wouldn't be very effective if I had a template that said hashtag book or hashtag author, and then every time I created a new note, it moved to the respective folder when I wanted the original note to stay in templates. So you can see here, I have this for topics, daily notes, atoms, molecules, alloys, and I could add one here for authors. So let's add new folder authors. So now, even if I add an additional tag to an author note, it won't move out of that folder once it's already in the author folder. This is a great way for you to prioritize the organization of your notes so that you don't accidentally keep moving your notes from one folder to another. I wouldn't worry about setting this up too much from the beginning. You'll probably create a new note and will accidentally automatically move it using the auto note mover plugin into the wrong folder. And when that happens, then you just add a new excluded folder and it won't happen again. Now, the goal of the auto note mover plugin is not to pre-plan everything, but to allow an intuitive and emergent system to grow in your Obsidian vault. So the best way to go, in my opinion, is to start adding rules into the auto note mover plugin. And if you notice some conflicts with the folders that they're going into, where it's moving from one folder to another, then you can start to add excluded folders so that you can prevent them from moving back out. Once we've created a series of automatic note movements with the auto note mover plugin, we have effectively created an inbox for that particular note type. So now what we can do is we can automatically index the notes using the data view plugin. So as a quick example, I have the mind and well-being topic. This is a topic that sits inside of my topics folder, mind well-being. I can use the data view plugin to create a list of all of the notes that have the tag 
hashtag mind slash well-being. So what this does is it uses the data view plugin to create an index of the inbox. So every time I put the tag hashtag mind and well-being, the note will now appear in the data view table here. So let's get that set up. So we can go back to community plugins, browse, search for data view, and click install. Again, I already have the data view plugin in installed, so let's check out the options. Okay, once you have installed the data view plugin, there's not really anything else you need to do. It is automatically connected to the rest of your vault, and you can start creating what's called a data view query to populate a table. Let's go take a look. Okay, so here we are inside my creativity and knowledge work topic. So this is in the topic folder, as you can see up here. And I have this as an excluded folder. So no matter what changes I make to this file, it won't leave the topic folder. Now I want to see the notes that I've included that have the tag creativity and knowledge work so that I can sort by topic. So you can see here, I have this data view table. And if I click on the little code button on the side here, you can see the code that went into creating this table. So let's walk through this piece by piece. Now this part might be a little confusing if you've never used the data view plugin before. So I want you not to overthink it at the moment. I don't want you to get too caught up in what's needed to be done for each of these. I have a templates folder on my digital garden. So you can see specific examples on how the table works and the code that goes into creating the table. So if you're interested in copying any of these templates, feel free to go to waterloots.xyz and take a look at templates where I will add all of this code after this video. Okay, so now let's take a look at the data view syntax. Syntax is just another word for a query language, something that you can use almost like a code to ask Obsidian using the data view plugin to pull specific information. So we can take a look here and we see that we have different columns. We have the file column, the updated column and the growth level column. So what we've done here is we've created a table. We've added an updated column, a growth level column and a file column is automatically added. Then what we do is we pull from the specific hashtag. So I can ask the data view plugin to pull from creativity and knowledge work and then sort by file.mtime descending. M time means modified time, and it's a note property of the markdown file in Obsidian. So what this means is that it's going to produce a table that has an updated column, a growth level column, pulls only notes from hashtag creativity slash knowledge work, and then sorts the files by last modified. There you go. As another example, let's take a look at the digital garden home where I have a glimpse of latest growth. And what this table does is it pulls the most recent notes that have been updated in my digital garden and published to my digital garden. So I have three columns here, the note name, last updated, and the number of links that link to that note. That way I have an idea on how popular the note is in my digital garden based on how interconnected it is with, it, with the rest of the website. Let's take a look at the code block. Okay, so we have data view again. Uh, the data view, just FYI, is created by adding the three ticks that automatically introduces a code block. And then you just type data view and you can start introducing the rest of the query syntax. So what I've done with this one is I didn't want to call it file. I wanted to call it note name. So I introduced at the beginning table without ID. And then I have as the first column file.link as note name. So you can see here that changes the column header to note name and it pulls the link of the note that's referenced in the table. Then I have comma file.mtime as last updated. So again, this is pulling the modified file time for that particular note that's linked in the first column. And then as the third column, I have length file dot in links as links. So what this does is it tracks the number, the length of all of the links that go into that note as links. So that produces the third column here. And the from query is pulling from the entire vault because I didn't specify a specific folder here. In the previous one, I specified that it came from hashtag creativity slash knowledge work, but you could also query a specific folder or a specific tag. It's up to you. And then I added a new limitation, which is where DG publish equals true. So at the top of my digital garden, I have as part of the digital garden plugin, the publish checkbox. And what that does is when I click check and then I press command P and search for digital garden publish, all the notes that are marked with DG publish equals true, the checkbox is checked, it automatically publishes that note. So that means that the notes with DG publish equals true are on my website. So by having the query limitation of where DG publish equals true, that means that this table is now going to pull from the entire vault, but it's going to filter the notes that have this property of DG publish equals true. 
This is a great way to quickly determine whether your node is on your website or whether it's in your private vault, because for this table, none of my private nodes will appear in this table. Then I sort the table by file M time, which again is the modification time descending so that it shows the most recently updated notes. And just so that I didn't have a thousand notes in here, I limited it to the top 10 most recent notes. And there we go. And then finally, for the data view plugin, I want to show you quickly that you can create a table that pulls from a specific source. So if we take a look here, I again have table without ID, file link as book. So this is showing the first column here that has the book by the file link, which is the name of the file. Author as author, producing an author column, genre as genre, which pulls from the genre property. I'll get into that more in a few minutes. And then I wanted to show you this part where it's pulling specifically from vault slash digital garden slash books. That's pulling from the books folder on my digital garden. And then I've also limited it by creating what's called a Boolean expression with the and function to say that I wanted only hashtag nonfiction books to be pulled into this table. So what that does is it allows me to pull all of the books that are in the books folder, include a link to the author name and the genre, and then sort by the author name. Okay, now before we get deeper into producing a library where I'll show you how to build this table and customize it as you wish, and also include an image of the book and automatically create the book note using the book search plugin. Let's take a quick look at the other form of using the data view plugin, which is a combination of data view and templator. This is the third plugin that you need to install. So you go back to community plugins, browse, search for templator and click install. Once you've installed the templator plugin, you need to specify the folder location of your templates. I have this as underscore templates in my vault, just so that it's a completely separate area from my vault that I know is more of a system folder rather than my own note folder. And then you also want to click trigger templator on new file creation. That's important. So if we go to my daily note, we can see that I have this automatic links section. Now, if we take a look at the code, we can see that this data view is a little bit different. So this is the date of October 10th, 2024. And we're filtering this data view to only show notes where the file.creation day, C day, is equal to this date. Similarly, in this table, we do the same thing, but we say where file.m day equals today date. So what this is doing is it's producing two different tables. The first shows notes that are created today, and the second is showing notes that were last updated today. But it wouldn't be a very good template that does automatic organization if we had to go in and change the date every single day. That would be kind of tedious. So what we can do, we can take a look here. You can see this is my daily note template. And there's no data view results for the template because I haven't run the templater plugin. So TP is the template. So we can create an automatically updating syntax within the data view plugin using the templater plugin. Where we have file day, file creation day equals date, we now run this specific templater syntax that because we checked the box of run template on new note, automatically run the templater plugin, what happens is when we create a new note with the daily note template, it will automatically run this templater and recognize that today's date is this date, and that will replace the data view syntax of this section with today's actual date. The way that you can set this up is through the daily notes plugin, which is a core plugin in Obsidian. So you can go and you can turn on daily notes here. And then if we take a look at the daily note plugin, we can see that I have my new file location goes into my daily notes and it's pulling from that template that I just showed you. So what that means is that every time I click this template button, open today's daily note, it automatically creates a daily note for today. So if I scroll down to the bottom, I can see automatically all of the notes that were created today. And if I go check out the code block, the templater query has been replaced with today's date, October 11th. So that's just a really nice and simple way that you can create an automatic data view table that indexes notes based on an ever-changing property like the date. Again, I have the code blocks for these automatic note creations for notes created today and notes last touched today as a template inside of my digital garden. So if you're looking to add any of this to your Obsidian vault or your digital garden, feel free to check out the templates folder on my digital garden and you can copy the data view query directly in there and it should run automatically when you click go on your daily note. Okay, so now that you understand how to use the auto note mover plugin, how to use the data view plugin and how to use the templater plugin to automatically customize your notes. We have a good system for creating smart and automatic folders 
in other words, inboxes with automatic indexes that show the contents of those folders or filters the contents of the folders by a specific tag, such as hashtag book or hashtag creativity and knowledge work. Now what I want to do is I want to show you in a little more detail how we can make the sources folder, uh, the books and articles, some form of inbox look a little bit nicer and have an automatic creation system for your books so that you can more easily create a library. So this is going to use the fourth plugin that I talked about, which is called Book Search. So I'm going to install that. I haven't used it before. There we go. Enable and options. OK, so now that we have that installed, we can take a look at the different settings. I'll walk you through step by step so that you can create a book template so that every time you add a new book to your digital garden or to your private vault, you can have an automated flow based on the book search. So this is where it depends if you want to have your books public or private. So for example, I have, you can see on the side here, how to take smart notes. And this is all of my notes, my private notes on this book. I want to create a book that can be displayed in my digital garden that goes into my source section here that only has specific excerpts of the book quotes and my notes related to those quotes not all of the jumble of my thoughts that I had while reading the book. For me, I'm going to add this to the books folder in digital garden slash books, but you can add this to any folder you want. And because I already have a note that's called how to take smart notes, I want to add some differentiating factor so that I can pull in the note title using the book search plugin, but have it stand out compared to my own private notes. So I've been using an emoji of the book to establish that where I use a different book color to indicate a different type of book. So I'm going to pull from my book legend and I'm going to add that. And this is where I can use the curly brackets to create a template so that when I do the book search, it'll pull in the title as the title of my new note. So I'm going to go emoji, title, and curly brackets. Great. Now I'm going to introduce a template. So I'm going to add my a template that I've created, which I'll walk you through in a moment. So I called this digital garden book template. I'm going to show the cover images to make sure that I can easily find what the book that I'm looking for. And I'm also going to enable the cover image save. This is important if you want to add cover images to your library data view table. I'm going to put this into my attachment folders, which is where I save all of my images. And there we go. We should be good. So now I'm going to close this. And I want to create a public facing version of my how to take smart notes so that I can add it to my source table on my digital garden. So if I press command P and search book search, create new book note, and I search for how to take smart notes, there we go. I can see that I have how to take smart notes by Sonke Irons. So I'm going to click on that. OK, there we go. You can see that the book search plugin created a note that had the emoji in front and then pulled the title how to take smart notes and it filled in all of the details that I told it to as part of my template. And because I told it to go into the books folder, it automatically moved the note into the books folder in my digital garden. OK, and then as part of my template, I had both fiction and nonfiction. So let's remove the fiction component and let's take a look at the source folder. So you can see here it automatically added the note to the nonfiction books table because I had the template set to hashtag nonfiction. So now I want to replace the author name with the linked author so I can update the table and click on the author here. And now let's take a quick look at the template I set up to establish this. OK, so I will also share this to my digital garden under templates so you can go through and use this if you want. But effectively, what I did was I used all of the auto populating terms from the book search plugin to automatically fill in all of the details about the book as this note. So it can pull in the title, the subtitle, the author, the category, the total page number, the publishing date, and the local cover image. So now we can take a look at my nonfiction book data view table that how to take smart notes has been added. However, I want to update this to only show books that have actually been published in my digital garden. So I can go in here into the table, click where DG dash publish equals true. And now you can see that the how to take smart notes has been removed. So if I go back to how to take smart notes and I click the DG publish and make it true, it has been re-added back into the table here. This is just a really easy way that you can choose whether or not you want your note to be made public or if you want it to stay private. And that's why I personally love the digital garden plugin. 
I have a tutorial on how to set it up if you're interested, uh, and also another video on the theory, the philosophy, and the benefits of using a digital garden rather than using traditional social media or a traditional blog website. Okay, so I know that was a lot of information, and a lot of people really struggle with the data view queries because it's almost like doing coding, and coding can be very confusing. So what I've actually found really helpful is to use Notebook LM, which is Google's experimental LLM, a large language model, or an AI chatbot. And the reason that Notebook LM is so helpful for data view is that you're able to introduce sources to the notebook and then ask the AI about those sources. So what I did is I went and I included a link to all of the different how to's on the official data view website, which can be seen here. And I went and found the most relevant sections on the side here and then added the links as a website source and then went through and asked questions about how I could structure the syntax for my data view query. And it took a couple tries, but it actually got it to solve my problems pretty quickly because it's able to reference these sources, which give the specific step-by-step -step instructions on how to use the data view. So if you end up getting stuck on the data view, I recommend trying that. As an alternative, there's also a community builder that might be able to help you out. The link is on my data view plugin page on my digital garden. And the community builder will walk step-by-step -step through what you're trying to do and it will automatically assemble the query for data view for you. So again, if you're trying to do something fairly simple, but you're a little confused at how it works and the, the where's and the from's and the lists start to confuse you, you can go to the community data view builder and it will build brick by brick the data view syntax so that you can add this to Obsidian. So I recommend checking that out if you're struggling with the data view at all. Okay, so just to recap everything that we've done here, We've created smart and automatic folders that create inboxes and then indexes for those inboxes so that you can find your notes more easily and you can automatically produce an organization system for your Obsidian without having to worry about where all the different files are going because you can automatically move the notes using the auto note move plugin based on the tags that you give it so that they move into their folder automatically. You can then exclude specific folders to prevent the notes from leaving that folder so that you don't have to worry about accidentally moving something just because you've given it another tag. So this allows you to set up a system that flexibly moves the notes into the folder automatically and then based on the rules that you set prevents those notes from leaving so that you can find those notes. Next I went through and explained how you can use the data view plugin to automatically index your notes. You can use this for topics, so you can keep track of the notes that are tied to a specific topic. You can use this for sources to keep track of books that you've read and notes that are related to that book. I also showed you how you can create automatic links in your daily note plugin so that you can automatically update the date using the templater plugin to customize the data view query every single day every time you click add new daily note. This just really simplifies the automation process of keeping track of which notes were created when and the context surrounding those notes on the days that you created them. Finally, we introduced the book note plugin that allows us to automatically pull in the metadata for a new note based on a template that we've created and then add that note to the book folder and display it in the source node so that we can keep track of an index of all the books that we've added to that particular folder. And then as the final step, I pressed publish, which enabled all of these notes to be published in my digital garden. And then the table, a glimpse of the latest growth was updated to show all of the changes that I made to my digital garden. Again, using a data view table that updates automatically whenever new notes are published to my digital garden. If you're interested in learning more about digital gardens, I also have a tutorial section on my website that shows specifically how to publish your Obsidian notes as a website for free uh, as a digital garden or a blog. And this tutorial includes a video on how you can build your own digital garden and publish your Obsidian notes for free and also has a step-by-step -step guide to, to walk you through the process. Again, all of the templates that I talked about for the code blocks for data view, the queries are available here in my templates folder on my digital garden. I hope that this tutorial shows you how you can use four simple plugins to really automate the organization and the indexing of your Obsidian Vault so that your personal knowledge management system can focus more on the notes that you add to it and the learnings that you're having rather than taking time to organize everything, which can be pretty daunting. 
If you found this video helpful, I would love if you could please consider liking and subscribing as I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel and your support means a lot. If you know someone else that might find this tutorial valuable, please consider sharing with a friend as word of mouth is by far the best way for me to grow my channel. If you're interested in staying up to date on the changes that I'm making in my digital garden, please feel free to check out my digital garden page at wanderloots.xyz, which is where I have that table that shows the most recently updated notes. And I also have a newsletter where I share information as I'm learning it called Cultivating, which is a part of my recalibrating newsletter. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.